Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And can you believe it? It is, we've, we've made it to almost the end of the year, guys. 2020 is almost over. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm so relieved. This is actually going to be the last episode of This Week on Channel 9 that we are recording for the year because the studio is shutting down and I'm taking some corporate mandated vacation. Um, I wish that I was wearing something a little more festive. I will talk more about that a little bit later in the show. But in the meantime, let's just get into all of our great final developer news for 2020. So first things first, we've got a really great event coming out next week on December 16th called Learn Together, uh, Developing Apps for Microsoft Teams. And this is going to be a really good event all about, you know, developing applications, like it says on the 10, for Microsoft Teams. And 2020 has been a really big year for Microsoft Teams because well, we've all been at home and we've had to kind of rethink how we work together. And so if you're a developer and you've been interested in either bringing an existing maybe web app to Teams or building a brand new app or learning a new skill, this is an event you definitely want to check out. It's taking place uh, between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. live on Learn TV, but all the uh, content is also going to be available on demand. I am hosting the event, so I'm a little bit biased, uh, but it's going to be really good. You definitely want to check it out. And in the show notes in the description down below, I've got links to the events so that you can be sure to tune in, as well as some resources for getting started building apps for Microsoft Teams. So good stuff. Next up this week was uh, GitHub Universe, which is GitHub's basically really big kind of developer conference. And this was the first time, you know, that they've had to kind of do it remote, but it was a great event. I've got links in the show notes and the description down below to the keynote and all the big announcements. Some of the big highlight things uh, that I want to point out, first of all, dark mode. Yes, this is awesome. And it's a really good dark mode. Um, also, Nat Friedman, the CEO of GitHub, says that they're working on a um, accessible mode for users who are colorblind to be coming out um, soon, too. So that's really exciting. But dark mode is here. It's awesome. Um, there's also now the ability uh, for sponsors for companies. So GitHub sponsors is a way that you can sponsor your favorite open source projects. And now companies have the ability to sponsor um, projects as well. That's really good. There's a ton of improvements happening to actions and a bunch of other features. Discussions are now um, live for, for everyone. So that's gone GA. Lots of really, really good stuff. I've got links in the show notes and the description down below, like I said, to the keynote, which you don't want to miss. It's only 15 minutes. It's really good stuff and all the big features, as well as some of the sessions that were happening throughout um, the three days that they were doing GitHub Universe because there were some really, really good conversations. So congrats to the GitHub team. Great job. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what other stuff is coming up next. Next up, um, talking about things that have, have kind of been announced recently, you know, I can't believe it, but it was like a month ago that uh, .NET 5.0 uh, was finally released. And there's a really good blog post on the .NET blog about what's new in the Windows Form runtime in .NET 5.0. And so if you're somebody who's been using, um, you know, uh, Windows Forms, but especially doing stuff with the runtime, there's some new additions and some changes and some um, some enhancements, especially around things like, like Windows controls. So I've got links in the show notes in the description down below for more details on that. Good stuff. Next up, um, speaking of, of .NET uh, 5.0, .NET Core updates, um, as well as .NET 5.0 updates, are going to be coming to Microsoft Update, meaning that depending on what version of Windows you're on and what sort of cadence they have installed, users will be getting those updates as, as part of the, the Microsoft Update process, which is really good because this means that if you're shipping apps that users use, you know, they're taking advantage of some of these newer technologies, they'll be able to um, uh, use them. Um, there, there was kind of a, a clarification in an update that says, you know, depending on like what server release you're on or, or some of the other like variances of Windows 10, there might be some differences in how this is rolled out. But for the most part, this is stuff that is going to be, that has already started rolling out. So Microsoft Update is really good stuff. We've got more um, details, as I said, um, in the show notes description down below. Next up, uh, really cool news from the, on the PowerShell front. Um, you know, PowerShell has had a really big year this year as well with, with, with the launch of PowerShell 7 and, and really kind of making the cross-platform PowerShell a thing. It's really exciting. And now uh, PowerShell Crescendo Preview.1 has been announced, which is basically a um, kind of a, a, a native um, a kind of a, a, a kind of a a runtime, I guess, kind of a kit to be able to build your own uh, commandlets and and other stuff. It's basically a frame. Sorry, let me rephrase this. It's a framework for, for rapidly developing PowerShell commandlets and um, native environments, but you don't have to worry about what platform you're on. So it's just going to work. And so this is a really big deal because 
what we've seen with PowerShell 7 is that there have been some commandlets that have taken a little bit of time to kind of convert and bring over into the ecosystem. But what's great about this is that this framework will make it easy to develop commandlets where you don't need to worry about if, if your user is using it in Windows or if they're using it um, you know, on Linux or if they're using it on a Mac, which is good stuff. And so the first kind of preview release of this is available now. I've got links in the show notes in the description down below for more details. I think this is awesome. And as somebody who loves like scripting languages more than anything, I'm really looking forward to seeing what can be built with this and, and maybe even giving it a shot myself. So check that out. Next up, speaking of PowerShell, everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman, has a great post on his blog about why you should use um, a PowerShell prompt with PS Readline. And that was, I think, Scott's official blog post. I think that I came up with a better title, which is use PS Readline to pimp your PowerShell prompt because it's alliterative and, and funnier. Uh, but this is a good blog post if you want to customize your PowerShell prompt uh, and, and you want to be able to get more from it and also look really cool, check that out or some really good tips. Next up, uh, I wanted to share this. This was actually something that a friend of mine, uh, Lauren Richter, inadvertently kind of started on Twitter uh, the other night um, that led into one of the most one of the worst horror stories I think I've ever read about like application development. But what came out of this story was also some really good lessons. And I think, you know, it's the holiday season, uh, grab some eggnog um, and, and maybe a, a stiff drink if, if that's your thing. Read this thread. Uh, I think that we will all instantly both feel better and worse about everything and be happy that we didn't have to, to deal with that. But there were also some good kind of developer lessons um, in uh, in this story, which is basically about kind of a an application rewrite uh, that that got went wrong in in all the possible ways that it could be interwoven with a lot of um, corporate drama uh, that happens with uh, you know a unicorn billionaire plus uh, uh, startup. So it's a good read. I've got a link uh, to the Twitter thread in the show notes in the description down below. Uh, thanks to to Stan, uh, the the developer who shared this story. I'm sorry this happened, but I'm actually very grateful that we all got to read it and, and learn from it. Uh, next up on channel nine this week, we've got lots of really good content to close out the year. First up on Visual Studio Toolbox, um, they talk about how you can use an existing .NET Core project template, which is awesome. So if you're wanting to kind of get started, especially now the .NET uh, you know, 5.0 is out, this is a good way of getting started. And then over on Azure Unblogged uh, with GitHub, uh, Sarah and Martin um, from the GitHub team. Uh, Sarah works at Microsoft, Martin's on the GitHub team. They talk um, uh, all about uh, GitHub, uh, which is you know great because GitHub Universe just took place. So that's a really great episode. And finally, we've got another great episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. This one is all about how you can create .NET Core projects with the command line. And uh, you know, I love a good GUI. There's nothing better than like a, a really beautiful graphical program. But I gotta say, there's nothing sexier than a really well defined, a really well designed um, um, you know command line application. So I love this. Had to share it. Good work, the Visual Studio Toolbox team. All right, and now it is time for my picks of the week. And it is the last episode of the year, so I'm gonna pick two. So first things first, the album hasn't come out at the time that I'm recording this, but it will be out by the time you're watching it. Uh, Taylor Swift has just surprise dropped another album called Evermore. I know how much you all love it when I talk about Taylor Swift, um, that's, that's a joke, but I'm actually very excited. Folklore was fantastic. Definitely my favorite album of the year. And I'm, both looking forward to and sort of dreading the fact that I'm probably going to be buying eight copies of this on vinyl. So check that out. And finally, my actual pick of the week, and unfortunately these are sold out, although I bet they're going to be on places like StockX or eBay or whatever if you really have to get one. But the ugly sweaters that the Windows team has historically only sent out to Microsoft um, Windows like insiders, like special people, were available for everybody to buy. And I actually ordered the, the one for this year, which was Microsoft Paint. I also managed to get a Windows XP model. Um, and um, last year, somebody was nice enough to send me the Windows 95 um, sweater, but mine haven't arrived yet. They will be here probably next week. Um, and so follow my Twitter if you wanna see me wearing my ugly sweaters, but I love this. I had to pick this. Um, if you were able to buy these, please uh, tweet me your photos of you in your ugly sweaters. I can't wait to see them. If you weren't, like I said, maybe eBay, maybe StockX, I don't know. Um, but I was really, really glad that they opened up a another run of these and, and made them available for everyone because you know what? I think we all need some cheer in our life after the last 12 months. 
All right. Well, that does it for me and for this episode of This Week on Channel 9. Um, let me know what you're looking forward to in 2021 in the comments down below, but also let me know what you thought about any of the other stories that we covered. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube. It really helps us out. And go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your needs. See you next time.